Starting with story one, we have the chalk closet. I wiped the sweat away from my forehead. It was only 7.30 in the morning, but the thermometer had already hit 95 degrees and the air conditioner on the bus was broken. This was not gonna be a good day. Hey kid, the bus driver yelled, end of the line. End of the line was right, I thought. I jumped off the bus and checked out the school. Millwood Junior High. It was a wreck. The school stood four stories high. Its red brick, blackened with years and years of city suit, was chipped and crumbling. All the windows on the second floor were boarded over with plywood, and the roof sagged. Better get used to this, Travis, I told myself. I dragged myself up the steps. You're going to be here all summer. No matter what my mum says, I didn't exactly try to mess up sixth grade. Like lots of major disasters, it just happened. I tried to study, but stuff kept getting in the way. Like when my cat Lily had her kittens, or when my brother got a new computer game, or when something was on TV. So, yeah, I messed up. And now, here I was in summer school, and looking at the school, I could see it was the pits. I opened the rusty door and stepped inside. The main hallway was dark. I could barely see. The air was dry and smelled really stale. I started to cough. <coughs> I took a drink from the water fountain beside me. The water was warm and cloudy, and it tasted old. I glanced up and down the hall. The place seemed deserted. No kids, no teachers, no one. I made my way down the hall and found a door marked principal. I jiggled the knob, locked. I checked out the classrooms, empty. Except for the squeak of my sneakers, the place was totally dead. What was going on? Was I here on the wrong day or is this the wrong school? Then a voice broke the silence. Travis Johnson? I nearly jumped out of my skin. I spun around and faced the tallest, palest man I'd ever seen. Y yes, I stammered. You're late, Travis, he said. His lips were unbelievably thin and they hardly moved when he spoke. Just great, I thought. My first day in summer school and I'm already in trouble. Way to go, Travis. I followed the tall man to the classroom at the end of the hall. Of course, it was the only room I hadn't checked out. It was filled with kids, many of them I'd never seen before. Dooley Atwater and Janice Humphreys were there. They came from my regular school. Janice was shy, but okay. Dooley was the biggest goof in my whole school. He knew a million ways to get out of homework. The last row, Travis, the teacher said, be quick about it. Then he picked up a piece of chalk from the chalk tray and wrote Mr. Grimsley on the board. Mr. Grimsley folded his arms across his chest and scanned the room. From the sour look on his face, I could tell he wasn't too thrilled about what he saw. Let me warn you, boys and girls, Mr. Grimsley announced, I have very little patience with students who don't care to study. Got that, Dooley? Me? Dooley asked. Why me? I know about you, Dooley, Mr. Grimsley said, thumbing through a stack of cards. I know about every single one of you, your bright kids, but you're all lazy. Hear this warning. You won't get away with anything in my class. Dooley smirked. Mr. Grimsley glared at him. Then he continued. You must do your homework every night or be prepared to go to the chalk closet. The chalk closet? One of the girls asked nervously. What's that? If you don't turn in your homework tomorrow morning, You'll find out, Amanda, Mr. Grimsley said. No teacher gives homework on the first night, Dooley protested. You've got to be kidding me. I do not kid, Mr. Grimsley declared. Now, let's get down to work. The first night for homework, we had to write five reasons we'd want to be a pilgrim. As soon as I reached home, I sat down at the kitchen table and wrote down three. Get to travel a lot. Eat dinner with some really cool Indians. Don't have to recycle. Then my brother Chris came in. Want to go to the ice cream igloo? He asked. They have a new flavour. Peanut butter marshmallow mint. 
I didn't have a choice. I had to go, right? After dinner, there was a Lethal Weapon movie on TV. There was no way I could miss that. So when I arrived at school the next morning, I still only had three reasons why someone would want to be a pilgrim. But it was three more reasons than Dooley had. Your homework, Dooley, Mr. Grimsley demanded. You have to give me a break, Dooley replied. Just this once, Mr. Grimsley. I have to, Mr. Grimsley asked, arching his eyebrows. It kind of looks that way, Dooley began. You see, a car alarm went off right outside my window, and it was so loud, I couldn't think. And by the time someone turned it off, it was way past your bedtime, Mr. Grimsley asked. Well, not exactly, Dooley admitted. But you did your homework anyway, and then when you woke up, the cat had eaten it. Is that what happened, Dooley? Well, something like that, Dooley said, smiling a little. Sorry, Dooley. I don't give breaks, Mr. Grimsley declared. It's time to go to the chalk closet. Then he stepped into the hall. Dooley started to follow, but when he reached the doorway, he stopped. I forgot my textbook, he said, turning back. Mr. Grimsley grinned, a creepy grin. The chalk closet isn't study hall, Dooley. So, what is it? Mr. Grimsley didn't answer. Dooley shrugged. Then he followed the teacher down the corridor. I heard their footsteps fade as they walked up the stairs to the second floor. Mr. Grimsley returned in a couple of minutes without Dooley. At recess, Dooley didn't show up, or at lunch, or the next day, or any day after that. I didn't miss him, and I didn't really feel sorry for him either. I figured he was kicked out of school, and he had it coming to him. But at the end of the week, the same thing happened to Marty Blank. Marty sat next to me. I didn't know him too well, but he seemed okay. Grimsley handed back the homework he had graded the night before. I heard Marty groan when he received his. There was a big red F at the top. You didn't study, did you, Marty? Mr. Grimsley asked. Marty shook his head. I couldn't, he said. I had Little League. Little League was more important than your schoolwork, Mr. Grimsley demanded coldly. It was the big game, Marty explained. The team was counting on me. The chalk closet, Marty, Mr. Grimsley replied. But I did my homework, Mr. Grimsley, Marty protested. I'm not like Dooley. It's not like I didn't try. Mr. Grimsley picked up Marty's homework. F, he stated. I guess you didn't try hard enough, did you, Marty? Let me show you to the chalk closet. Marty's mouth dropped open. It looked as if he were about to say something, but he didn't. He just followed Mr. Grimsley down the hall. Four days later, Marty still hadn't shown up at school. Maybe Grimsley kicked him out of school, I told Janice. Or maybe Marty convinced his parents to let him quit, I suggested. For all we know, Marty could be having a great time at the lake. For all we know, Janice said, Marty could still be in the chalk closet. Janice and I gazed up at the second floor. That's probably where Mr. Grimsley took them, she said. Those boarded up windows give me the creeps. We stared up at the windows in silence. Travis, what do you think is in the chalk closet? Chalk. Very funny, Travis. You might not be scared, but I am. I'm really scared. I got D's on my last three assignments. What if I'm next? What if I'm next? I thought with a shiver. The next morning, Janice's hands shook when Grimsley handed back our assignments. But, but, but I worked really hard on it, she stammered. I really did. I didn't need to see her grade. I knew from Janice's voice that she had failed. Grimsley didn't say a word. He just walked to the door and waited. Janice stood up. Grimsley waited. She slowly made her way to the door. Then they both disappeared down the hall. Mr. Grimsley returned in a minute or so, and the class went on as usual. Right before the bell rang, Mr. Grimsley made an announcement. We're going to have a math test tomorrow, and I expect everyone to get an A. An A? I'd never gotten an A on a math test, like ever. The bell rang, and I dashed outside to wait for Janice. I thought about the test while I waited, and waited, and waited. Janice never showed up. I ran all the way home and grabbed the phone. I dialed Janice's number. The phone rang and rang, but there was no answer. I looked up Marty's telephone number in the phone book and called him. A recorded message announced that the Blake's number 
had been disconnected. That night, I tried to study. I never tried harder at anything in my whole life, but I was too frightened to concentrate. What if Grimsley sends me to the chalk closet, I asked myself over and over again. When I finished the test the next day, I knew I'd blown it. I'd been so lucky if I passed, but I'd have to wait till Monday to find out. Two whole days to find out. That weekend dragged. I couldn't think about anything else except that stupid math test and the chalk closet. Monday morning finally arrived. My feet felt like lead as I walked up the stairs to the school. This was not going to be a good day. I took my seat and stared straight ahead at Mr. Grimsley. He sat at his desk. The pile of test papers was neatly stacked in front of him. He cleared his throat. I'm going to return your test papers now, he said. Most of you did very well. He didn't look at me when he said that. But what did that mean? Was it good or bad? I don't know. Bennett, Amanda, he began. A. Oh no, he's actually calling the grades out too. Drake, Josh, A. Evers, Brian, A. Franklin, Marnie, A. Wow, I couldn't believe it. Everyone was getting A's. I broke out in a cold sweat. I wiped my sweaty palms on my pants. Hey, don't worry, I told myself. Everyone's getting A's. I probably got one too. Grimsley continued calling out names and grades. I was next. My temples pounded as I watched him stare down at my paper. Johnson, Travis, D. The whole class gasped. You know... I can do better than that, Mr. Grimsley, I started. Let me let me take the makeup test, okay? You'll see. No makeup tests in my class, the teacher replied sternly. Please, Mr. Grimsley, I cried. Don't don't take me to the chalk closet. Please. Come on, Travis, Mr. Grimsley said. You don't want to upset the other students, do you? I glanced around the room at the other kids. A few of them stared at me, their eyes filled with horror. But the others had their heads buried in their textbooks. They pretended that they didn't even know what was going on. Don't you care? I screamed at them. No one answered. Mr. Grimsley stood at the door. Come, Travis. My knees shook so hard I could barely walk. I followed Mr. Grimsley into the hall. The front door was at the end of the hall. Mr. Grimsley's legs were longer, but I was younger. Could I outrun him? Don't even think about it, he said without turning back. It's locked. I followed Mr. Grimsley up the stairs. It was almost pitch black on the second floor. The only light came from a naked bulb dangling on the ceiling. I trailed behind Mr. Grimsley, past room 269, then 270, then 271. When we came up to 272, he stopped and turned toward me. Goodbye, Travis, he said. I took a step back. I couldn't speak, I was terrified. Mr. Grimsley twisted the doorknob, then he gave the door a little push and it creaked open. I peeked in over his shoulder. My heart pounded. What would I see in there? I couldn't see anything. It was totally dark. Mr. Grimsley gripped my shoulder and shoved me forward. I stumbled inside. The door slammed shut behind me. I was locked inside, inside the chalk closet. I squinted, waited for my eyes to adjust to the darkness, and then I saw them, Dooley, Marty, Janice, and behind them, shadows of other kids I'd never seen before, transparent figures, ghosts. I squinted harder. They were all doing something. They were all holding their hands up in the air. Why? I wondered. Why are they doing that? That's when I heard it. That's when I knew the chalk closet was the worst place on earth to be. My hands flew up in the air too, up to my ears to cover them to drown out the screeching, the horrible screeching sound of chalk on a chalkboard, the sound that I'd have to listen to forever. I really, really hope that one wasn't too scary for you. I'd love for you to come back. I'd love for you to check out the rest of the stories as I read them from this book. Even more tales to give you goosebumps. Hit like, hit subscribe. I'll see you back here again for some more.